go to that description box down below and you are going to find out where you can get this free pattern from. This has all been done on a PDF. So this square here should measure at one inch. So basically what we're going to do first is we are going to cut out all of our pieces. And you're going to follow along like the dotted line, which is your seam allowance. When we inspect these pieces a little bit more closely, you will notice that A and B are both the same, E and D are both the same, and C is all on its own. So I'm going to show you how to do A and then you'll be able to do B on your own. So let's start that. You can just use your scrap fabrics for this. It's absolutely fine. I gave you the amounts that you would need to make this and you'll have more than enough. What I find the easiest is to cut sections of this off so I have it ready to go. So I'll cut a section off and I'll let you know how wide this is. So I've cut like a two and a half inch piece of fabric off my grey and I'll do that also for the white and the yellow. When we look at this section here you'll see it goes from A1 all the way through to A5. So A1 is where we start. And this is the first line that we are bothered about right now. So the first colour is going to be white. And then we also need the second colour, which is yellow. So we get a white. I'm going to lift the template up. We're going to get a yellow. And then I like to put one behind the other. So your white section for your white unit needs to go first and that white unit needs to be face up so if you are using a pattern face up this piece face down now this line here the fabric needs to be at least a quarter of an inch over that line now you can lift it up and put it to a light source and you will be able to see your fabric through there so we can tell that it is a quarter of an inch over. I am not paid nor sponsored during any part of this tutorial. I have a Gutemann thread in the top. I have a 9014 needle in my sewing machine and then just a regular foot. I also use just a regular straight stitch and making sure that that needle is in the central position. You also want to take that stitch length down to about a 1.6 because you want the stitches to be fairly tight because we're sewing in a small area and then we're going to back stitch and then go forward and back stitch and there we go every time you do this you're going to get these threads two on the front and two on the back and you're going to snip them away and keep everything tidy so you're going to do that every single time. Now what we get to do is open this out and then you can just finger press it down or you can use a little roller to press it down. This is where it comes really fun because now we get to fold this line back here. And we're going to take off a quarter of an inch along this line here. So our quarter of an inch comes off. Then we fold that paper back. And the next colour is white. So we need a white section that's going to cover all of this area here. This is why you, if you become too frugal with your fabric, when you fold it back, it's not going to cover the area that you want it to. So make sure that you do this, um, you know, quite generous. 
So when you've stitched across this line and then you turn it over and you flip it back, everything need, is where it needs to be. Now, before you do that, just double check. It might be a little bit too much here. So I'm just going to trim this down and then I can fold everything back. So that piece has completely covered the area I need it to cover. You don't want to see any paper when you've turned it back around on that area that you need to fill that colour with. So coming to A4 now, fold that back. Let's once again cut away that quarter of an inch. And then we just need a yellow. Place it there and then turn the whole unit around. And then you can stitch all the way down that line. Fold it back. Give it a press. Or I have one of these so I can roll it. Turn it over and then we're working with A5. Fold this back, cut off a quarter of an inch. Take our next white section, just cut another piece off. And then place that right on top of there. Turn the template around and you can stitch right along this line again. Now we're going to push this back, turn it around and then what we can do now is trim away all this excess. Try not to cut the paper because the paper is your seam allowance. I need to change my rotary blade, it's getting a bit dull. So that is unit A complete and I love it because your work is all on the back here. So then you can then do unit B exactly like we've just done unit A. Oh and don't worry that unit B starts off first. Let me just help you here. So I'm going to fold B2 back here. And then you're just going to cut this to that quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then you just get your yellow piece and then just start building that unit. So we've got this shape going on. So I would put this like this and then match that up. To the quarter like so and then we're just going to stitch along here now we've had these sections done we can move on to our other section and i'm sure you're getting the hang of it now so we're going to move on to section c and section c once again it has you starting from the middle but it really doesn't matter where you start whether it starts at the beginning or the middle it's the same C1 is yellow and C2 is grey. So I'm just going to fold this back and I'm going to put yellow on first and then I'm going to put the grey behind it like so, making sure that this is at least a quarter of an inch. If it's too much, I can cut it later. And then I'm going to sew across here. Then we get to flip this up. And fold C3, cut a quarter of an inch off, and then we fold this back, and it's going to be a yellow section. So place this here, 
and sew along here. Then we get to flip this back here and then we get to work on the other side. I love doing these miniature quilts. I love this bit, this is the best bit. We get to cut this miniature quilt unit. If you're enjoying my quilting tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. I have over 500 sewing and quilting tutorials on my YouTube channel. And then what I'm going to do on this unit here is just cut these away. Oops, sorry. Cut this away. And that reveals, I love that part, that unit. Our next mini quilt units are right here and they're exactly the same so I'm only just going to show you one and you can do the other one yourself. So this still involves grey and yellow. One of these units is actually white and on your sheet you're going to have this all marked out so you can reference what colours are which. So D1 is white and D2 is yellow. So white goes in front, yellow goes behind. And like I said, we need to make sure that that's a quarter of an inch. And then once that's correct, we can sew. Just make sure that the white section covers all of this paper. The yellow section covers all of the area needed. And then we're just going to fill out this gray. So you can do this with a pair of scissors as well if you want, whatever you find the quickest. Now you can go on and do the final piece yourself. You're going to refer back to your diagram because that's going to show you exactly how to build it. So you're going to take your B sections and you're going to start folding the paper back and tearing it out because we don't need the paper anymore. So do that with both B and C. So this is B, this is C. We are going to flip them so the right sides together and we're going to make sure that all of our seams are in line with each other. It's very important. And then once you get them in line, take some clips and clip into place. Go over to your sewing machine, sew a quarter of an inch. Now, test your sewing machine is sewing a quarter of an inch. I like to use stitch number 30 on my Soprano with my sewing foot, my quarter of an inch sewing foot with guide on. Now we can open up that unit. So the next section I'm going to do 
is this section here and this is a D. So I'm going to take the paper off, place the unit right sides together and sew into place. Then you can flip that back and you can see how it's building nicely. So then you're going to take your E section, take the paper off, line everything up right sides together. Then you can open that unit up and then we are just adding on the A unit. Then you're going to join them right sides together. At this point in time, I would go and press this out. This is calling out to be a pink cushion. It really is. If you don't want to do the little um, wall mini mini one, two, three. So that is that unit to put on. This is really calling out to be a little pin cushion. So if you didn't want to do a little mini quilt, you could totally change this into a pin cushion. Go to the iron and press this out. I like to start with the left and right border first. And then you can go ahead and do your top and your bottom borders. Press them out. Now from this stage, you don't have to make a miniature quilt if you don't want to. You could use these and you could build it into a great big quilt if you wanted to. You have this pattern, you would just continue on doing the same same block over and over and then create it into a lap quilt, etc, etc. So I'm just going to stick and make this into a miniature. Let's create a miniature quilt sandwich. That's your back in your button and then your quilt top goes on top here so now what i like to do is take this over to my sewing machine and do decorative stitches on this when you do decorative stitches on your sewing machine you can't pull or tug on the piece as it's going through you need to let it go through and i'll show you what's going to happen if you do that here is how your stitches should look they're pretty consistent and then when I started like pulling it through from the back like this and pushing it through, it started to, where was it? It's here. Can you see this here at the bottom? That is where I was pulling it through. And this here as well is where it's too tight. So you've got to let it just feed through naturally. Cut away the excess. I don't recommend doing anything less than a two inch wide binding, otherwise you're going to struggle meeting them two ends. Now I have lots of quilt binding videos and even my previous mini quilt, I showed you how to do it. So let's get the binding on. I like to machine my mini quilts on the front and hand stitch on the back. And like I said, I have over 500 YouTube tutorials now so don't forget to subscribe and you'll see more videos just like this and here is the mini quilt all done I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial like I said subscribe like this video and comment down below I really appreciate it thank you